Hello, good afternoon. My name is Bahi Hur. I'm from Ativo Networks. I run solution engineering in the Middle East region, and I'll be uh, happy, and it's my pleasure today to present to you, um, we can call it a new topic in cybersecurity called the Endpoint Detection Net. So uh, we will discuss in details what is Endpoint Detection Net from Ativo Networks, how it works, how it integrates with EDR vendors to achieve the maximum endpoint resilience and uh, early detections of advanced cyber attacks. This is our agenda for today. We're gonna talk about threat detection gap and mainly the, the concern of dwell time. Then we gonna touch a little bit about Ativo Cyber Deception Fabric, where in, uh, EDN or Endpoint Detection Net is, is, is part of it. Then uh, we will discuss and explain how EDR plus Ativo EDN will provide us with an advanced, comprehensive, uh, MITRE attack coverage, MITRE attack TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures. And finally, we will be um, uh, talking at a very high level about MITRE shield matrix coverage with cyber deception and especially the TIVO EDR. Um, to start with, um, as we all know, the battle um, against advanced cyber attacks has moved inside the network. So uh, the parameter, the network parameter is almost disappearing. And uh, every day we deal with advanced uh, cyber threats uh, challenging us in terms of detection and incident response. Uh, I would like to start with um, an example. If we look at um, cyber breaches, um, or data breaches that we uh, see every day targeting different organizations. And if we look at one of those reports or some of those reports that are generated by or published by um, the uh, IR uh, third party organizations, like for example, Verizon or, or Mtrend from, uh, from uh, FireEye or so on, and they always discuss about the breach in details and they explain about the infiltration process, the exfiltration process, what are the TTPs, activities, and when the initial compromise happened and when was the discovery of that attack or the damage that was caused by, by that particular attack, basically. So um, if you look at the screen here, the Infiltration process or the average time for an attacker to initially compromise a machine, of course, after the information gathering and social engineering, is normally less than five hours. And the time to exfiltrate data, the process that takes the attacker to, to, to exfiltrate data outside the network, is normally about um, uh, 15 hours or so. However, if we look at the dwell time, which is an average of for our region is about 78 days to find that we have an intruder or an adversary that is lurking in our inside our network. So if the infiltration is five hours, if the exfiltration is 15 hours, that is 20 hours, then I mean, what was the uh, attacker doing for about 78 days? It means that we have a lot of activities that have been performed by the attacker inside the network, moving from one machine to another till they find or they reach their, their final destination before they do any kind of a damage or encryption or data exfiltration. So this is the challenge of dwell time. Unfortunately, after the initial compromise and the privilege escalation done by the attacker or stealing the credentials, we will have uh, a lot of TTPs, a lot of activities that are hidden from the security controls simply because the attacker will be acting as a real user in that environment. Why? Because he gained access to credentials, he uh, escalated privileges, he uh, intercepted authentication requests as acting as man in the middle, he queried Active Directory for privileged accounts, and unfortunately we will miss all of those activities because of the 
or because of we lack some of the advanced detection tools inside the network. So in this presentation, we are going to see how EDN or Ativo EDN will help us detect those attack activities very early stage in the attack cycle and how we can also integrate with EDR vendors to uh, uh, supercharge the detection and enhance that detection to cover those specific use cases. Uh, let's have a, a look and uh, a very high uh, level uh, view of the Ativo deception fabric. So um, as a general idea, deception is placing and deploying traps. Those traps are computer systems, basically. They are servers, they are uh, workstations, they are IoT devices, um, active directory, containers, functions, web applications, and so on. But these are uh, fake systems. Fake systems, it means they have been deployed by the security team or by the SOC team to enable them detect uh, adversaries, attack activities within the network by actually engaging and experiencing that, that attack. Also, it provides a great visibility on what's really happening inside each and every VLAN within the environment. So we will discuss in the next slides how a table EDN fits in the whole deception fabric and what are the value adds that we are going to get. So today we are discussing and with Ativo EDN and with Ativo Deception, we will be discussing advanced cyber threat use cases that are normally mentioned in every breach report, but unfortunately, most of our detection and prevention controls have missed those uh, uh, kind of TTPs. So when we talk about lateral movement threat detection within the network, this is a huge challenge because most of the attackers inside the network, when they perform lateral movement, they have already escalated privileges in the earlier stages and they have real user credentials and admin accounts from the Active Directory. When we talk about credential theft, credential dumping, and harvesting credentials locally from the endpoints or through Active Directory queries, that is again another great uh, challenge we are facing as of today. Active Directory reconnaissance and compromise this is a major uh, uh, um, I mean, threat for, for all of us, for all the organizations, because if my Active Directory is already compromised, then the attacker has a full control over the whole environment, and he will be able to create account, delete account, and control he, uh, all the authorities, the, the privileges within, within the, the environment. And we should also uh, remember the new or the evolving attack surface that we have today is from industrial control systems, SCADA devices, IoT devices, uh, custom hardware, and so on that are starting to be a really uh, a, a very common attack vectors for most of the attackers. Now let's go into more details about endpoint detection net, which I mentioned it is part of the Ativo deception fabric. So Ativo deception fabric basically have two main components. One is the uh, bot sync, which is actually the decoys or the honey nets that is being distributed within, within the network to detect any kind of reconnaissance or a lateral movement happening. And the other component is something runs on the endpoint. And it is targeting to um, detect the attackers post the initial compromise and during the information gathering phase. So we want to know about those attackers and to be able to detect their activities during the information gathering phase, whenever they are looking to harvest credentials or to recon or fingerprint services within the network or query Active Directory to gather more intelligence and more information about the environment. So EDN runs on the endpoint, whether it's a workstation or a, or, or a laptop or, or, a, or, a, or a server machine, it runs on the endpoint. And it is a single service, a very light service. It's not considered a full agent that does a lot of scanning and, and memory utilizations and so on. It is a very light service, single service that runs on the endpoint with a single license and runs five different modules. And those five modules, as I mentioned, are going to help us 
detect the attacker during the information gathering phase and complement whatever your EPP or EDR running on the endpoint is already providing. So the first point, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to discuss them in details in the next slides. So we are talking about deceptive lures. Deceptive lures are the deceptive objects that we inject into the real systems to act as a bait for the attacker whenever he is trying to look for, for uh, harvesting credentials or looking for scripts and files or browser cookies and URLs and SMB shares he will find a very authentic, very attractive, deceptive objects that will lure him and will mislead him uh, and redirect him from the production environment towards the deceptive environment. Those are normally deceptive credentials, deceptive SMB shares, deceptive files and, and folders, as well as URLs and, and uh, web profiles and FTP profiles. The second module is called uh, Threat Path. It does basically an attack service reduction on the endpoint. As we inject and deploy deceptive objects, we also need to have visibility on the real objects, on the real exposed cached credentials on those endpoints that present a very high risk in terms of harvesting as well as lateral movement and connecting to, to a very high critical assets within our environment. So, we have a continuous real-time visibility on every account that is cached, and especially those are considered as uh, privileged accounts within the network. If they are cached on normal user VLANs, then this is definitely a high risk. And if that machine is getting compromised, then the attacker will have a very, uh, uh, um, uh, very good option to, to do a successful uh, lateral movement and successful access to one of the critical assets within the network. The third module is Active Directory uh, Protection. We call it AD Secure. And basically, the, the, the target for, for implementing AD Secure is to protect our Active Directory from being compromised and protect our high-privileged Active Directory accounts from being harvested and queried by the adversaries and the attackers. So the idea here is to monitor the malicious AD queries, intercept the responses, hide the real data and the real response from our Active Directory and provide fake deceptive content to the attacker that will lead him to engage with our decoys that are part of our uh, deception uh, fabric. The fourth module is Deflect. So Deflect is um, uh, a tool that will help us detect uh, any attempt to fingerprint or probe a service within, within our environment, even if that fingerprinting or service popping is happening on one of the real endpoints, not on the, on the decoy systems. So with that feature, I am basically turning every endpoint and every server within your environment to a trap, to a decoy system, if someone is trying to perform and unauthorized activities, reconnaissance or fingerprinting, or trying to do a kind of uh, uh, east-west lateral movement uh, uh, activities. Uh, the, the last module or the fifth module is a ransomware protection using deception. So here we do not look at the ransomware process or the ransomware uh, uh, files with signatures and rules and, and behavior and machine learning to, to block them. We basically look at it from a whitelisting perspective. So we know our critical file shares, critical files and folders, and with uh, uh, very granular policies, we can hide those files and folders from any untrusted or unwanted applications. So basically, if I have a new process or a new DLL runs on the endpoints, and that is related to a zero-day malware that was not identified by my endpoint security, it doesn't really matter because my uh, files, folders, and map shares are already hidden from that new process or a new executable. So in that scenario, uh, my data is really protected since that process will not be able to, to access those files and folders, then the encryption will or exfiltration will not happen. Let's move to... Um, the, the, the main or one of the most important features of, of EDN, which is Active Directory Attack uh, 
uh, interception or Active Directory uh, protection. How it works, basically our service is running on the endpoint and with uh, very granular policies, we can define uh, uh, deceptive user accounts that will replace the privileged accounts, the real domain admins, enterprise admins, schema admins that can be queried from the machines that are joined to the domain uh, towards Active Directory. So uh, basically, uh, my endpoint service will monitor those malicious queries, will generate an alert for the query along with the query details, and at the response back from the real Active Directory or domain controllers, we are going to intercept that query, hide the real data, and then uh, provide deceptive uh, uh, credentials, deceptive data to the, to the attacker with cached net sessions on the same endpoints uh, pointing to decoy systems on the other side. So with this, I am really uh, uh, basically hitting uh, multiple birds in, in, in with one stone. I, in, the, in this case, I have identified the malicious uh, uh, Active Directory queries, and I have um, uh, generated an alert for the SOC team. Uh, so I'm detecting the attacker here during the information gathering phase. Number two, I've protected my Active Directory from being compromised. I protected my privileged accounts from, from, from being harvested, and I delivered fake data and fake credentials to the attacker that will lead him to decoy systems. So after the, the successful access by the attacker using my deceptive credentials on the decoy system, I have a full engagement and I have a full TTPs, uh, uh, attack artifacts and forensics gathering uh, with, with full counterintelligence about that specific uh, threat. So it is a very effective tool to protect your Active Directory and privileged accounts from being compromised. Uh, plus, it uh, doesn't really require any change or any installation on your uh, real Active Directory servers or domain controllers. You don't need to change anything within Active Directory schema, so everything will be running on the endpoint side. This is an example of uh, how we are able to uh, uh, intercept a query that, uh, that is has been run from, from a, an infected or a compromised user machine where the attacker is basically running an NL test uh, command trying to list down the domain controllers. So in the uh, first screenshot with the red color, uh, this is a machine that is not protected by uh, EDN or by AD Secure. So the result of the domain controllers is 100% real and any information followed by that specific command will uh, provide the attacker with real data to proceed with, with his attack. The uh, second screenshot with the dark blue color, uh, this is a machine that's protected with EDN or with AD Secure, and the attacker now is trying to um, uh, run the same command and the answer is completely deceptive. It's a fake answer. We uh, uh, can hide the real answer and provide a fake answer that anything after that is is queried from those fake domain controllers is going to be fake and will misdirect and will lead the attackers towards the uh, decoy systems. This is an example of the uh, successful detection and the data that we are able to capture from that specific activities. We detect the process name, the hash value, the path, the query type, and the user, the compromised user with the source IP address, the binary and the process judge that generated the, the, the query along with the publisher, and a, a capture of the query details. So we basically provide you with the exact command that has been run or executed by the attacker on the compromised endpoint. Very great visibility and, and detection. And by the way, those information like the process name, the process hash, the IP address, and the compromised user can really help you to do a quick threat hunting using your SIM solutions or EDR solutions uh, across thousands of endpoints to know where else the same uh, query have been executed or the same process is already running or present. So the, the second module is about protecting our credentials. If you're talking about admin credentials, uh, employee credentials, cloud, in transit, active directory, SaaS, regardless. 
So credentials harvesting is a common uh, uh, technique that most of the attackers, they perform to act as a legitimate user within the network. And after that, uh, we, what we call it harvesting or privilege escalations, all the attack activities will be hidden from the security controls because basically the, the, the attacker will be acting as a real user within, within the, the environment. Uh, so EDN, a TIVO EDN with, with threat strike supports uh, various deceptive objects that can be injected on multiple operating systems. So it supports Windows, Linux, Macs, as well as the cloud access keys and, and credentials. Those deceptive credentials will be customized by us and will be injected in the LSAS memory, in the credentials manager, in the browser cookies, and so on. Wherever the attacker is trying to, to do a privilege escalations or dump credential using zero day Mimikatz tool, or even query Active Directory, we will be able to uh, make those deceptive objects available, but pointing to the deception environment, the decoy systems, instead of the real system. So it's a very effective way of detecting an attempt to do a credential dumping, credential harvesting, or even un un unauthorized access using those kind of credentials on decoy servers as well as on real servers. The third module is threat pass, which is the attack path uh, visibility and assessment. And here we're, we're basically looking at the real credentials that are cached locally on the uh, user's machines and will present a risk of once that machine is compromised, the attacker will find some real uh, objects, some real user accounts and service accounts and maybe privileged accounts that will lead him or will allow him to access uh, real critical assets within, within the environment. So in this scenario, we are basically having a continuous monitoring and alerting on any, uh, um, uh, any cash accounts or cash privileged accounts that will have a valid uh, path pointing to one of the critical systems defined by us. And we will be able to provide also uh, uh, many um, uh, endpoint uh, vulnerabilities. So provide you with visibility on any endpoint vulnerabilities that will be present or might be present on your endpoints, as well as the remediation action from the same management uh, console. So now we talk about ransomware and ransomware, as all of you know, it's a hot topic. It's um, really hitting a lot of organizations with multiple waves and multiple techniques and so on. Especially today, we are dealing with what we call it ransomware 2.0 or APT-like ransomware, or some people, they call it a human-operated ransomware that doesn't only do um, a, a lateral spread, initial compromise, lateral spread, and then do encryption and ask for ransom. No, it does a lot of activities before really going ahead and doing the encryption or data exfiltration and then asking for ransom. They do a lot of activities starting from the initial access using phishing or vulnerabilities or brute force attacks or, or uh, removal storage uh, devices uh, followed by credential uh, theft using privilege escalations or harvesting or dumping or active directory queries or man in the middle and then followed by a, a network reconnaissance um, smb shares uh, exploiting vulnerabilities inside the network, utilizing misconfigurations to do a lateral spread and, and, and so on. And then finally, they do an account manipulations, creating a new accounts, running PowerShell scripts and commands, and so on. This is uh, establishing the, 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 the uh, uh, persistence. So uh, after that, they, once they are well established and they have a very wide foothold within, within the environment, they go ahead and encrypt your data that they got access to or exfiltrate the data if the, uh, uh, the communication between the compromised systems and the CNC servers is managed uh, to be, to be uh, established. So uh, how EDN can, can help here? Uh, maybe as we discussed in the, last, in the last couple of slides, 
we are able to alert you a very early stage within the attack cycle during the information gathering phase if the attacker is trying to do a privilege escalations or credential harvesting or credential dumping, network reconnaissance, SMB shares, and so on, and active directory queries or none in the middle or any kind of those malicious activities before we reach to the stage that we have an encrypted data or access to, 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 to uh, uh, our SMB shares and uh, files and folders. But the last layer before even uh, going into the encryption stage or exfiltration stage, you will be alerted and you will have full details and TTPs about that specific activities. But as a last layer of defense, we enable you, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, when we defined EDN, we enable you to hide your real data, your real files and folders and map share drives from any uh, untrusted applications. So, uh, if the attacker managed to reach to those devices, our critical files and folders will not be visible to the attackers or to the ransomware process. Hence, the encryption will never happen, exfiltration will never happen, and my data will be uh, uh, blocked or protected uh, all the time. This is a quick example about uh, with or without ransomware protection using a TiVo uh, EDN. On the left side, this is a machine that is not protected by EDN. And if you can see the three files within the small rectangle, company info, customer report, and, and document files, those are shown on the left side because, but on the right side with a, a ransomware protection policy from Ativo EDN, I have defined those files to be protected. It means they cannot be seen uh, using the command line, they can only be seen if they are accessed using Windows Explorer. That's why they are not present on the right hand side. And the last uh, module with, with or from Ativo EDN is what we call it deflect. So as I mentioned at the beginning, deflect is targeting to protect our uh, endpoints, our real endpoints from being fingerprinted uh, on the OS level or on the service level. Uh, anybody who's trying to do a direct port sweep on a real endpoint, we should know about him. Uh, if he does a, a complete port sweep or a host sweep within the, the VLANs, definitely our decoys that are distributed everywhere are going to detect that kind of activity. But if the port sweep or the reconnaissance is targeting a specific IP, and that is a real IP, then deflect will uh, help us identify that malicious activity, alert you at the early stage, and deflect the traffic from the real system to a decoy system. So an engagement will happen between the attacker and the decoy systems, and we have a more, uh, um, what we call it, uh, adversary intelligence uh, based on that, on that engagement. We have also uh, something called decoy files or decoy documents that are um, basically are real files that are created by you and are converted using our deception fabric to a decoy files and decoy documents. And those can be distributed across the real endpoints or the decoy uh, systems, or even on systems that are facing the internet. Any access or any exfiltration of those files will uh, alert the SOC team about an unauthorized access or a data theft or a data exfiltration attempts happening on those, on those uh, systems. So it's a very good tool to provide you with a counterintelligence about who is looking after your data and who is trying to steal your data and access your data internally or externally. So with all the modules and with all the features that we spoke about, we have, or they are presented in a very, I would say, um, uh, um, a comprehensive and uh, a threat intelligence way using the MITRE ATT&CK mapping. You know, MITRE ATT&CK uh, framework, I mean, it helps us uh, understand the uh, uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures that are performed by the adversaries uh, to, uh, to utilize those kind of, of, of processes to uh, compromise and uh, attack our, our networks. So that kind of, of uh, attack phase categorizations or classifications 
along with the severity and the MITRE attack mapping within our dashboard, will first of all provide us with a centralized threat intelligence that is really 100% related to our environment. It's not something that's subscribed from outside. This is something that has been detected inside our network and has been happening in, within, within our environment. It provides us with a complete kill chain attack analysis, TTPs, engagement and monitoring details, and network visibility and reporting. This is uh, how within, uh, within the engagement or using the engagement with our decoys within the BotSync appliance, how we uh, show you the automated analysis and environment to gather the adversary intelligence whenever we have uh, a successful detection uh, within, within the, the deceptive environment. And uh, since we are based or Ativo is based on detecting or engaging with the attacker in real time within, within the network, uh, the uh, uh, forensics capabilities are really huge. I mean, that will always enable you to do a faster remediation and threat hunting since you have the, the, the important information in your hands. You know what to look for in order to see if the same uh, compromise or the same infection is happening somewhere else. So all the data collections and analysis is happening in, in, in the BotSync appliance, forensics artifacts that are captured from files being written to the disk, memory activities, registry, network, and so on. And all of them can be exported um, in, in sticks, IUC, packet capture, as well as you will have access to all the CNC domains, uh, file hash values, and you will be able even to, to do a, a malware analysis uh, within, within the sandboxing environment uh, that is hosted on our uh, uh, platform. Uh, not only that, there is an automated data sharing and actioning that is done using our uh, uh, threat ops module. Threat ops, it's the incident response playbooks where we can integrate with your SIM solution and other third party automated uh, integrations to allow um, a, a data sharing, uh, elevating the detection capabilities of your uh, prevention tools, as well as, as, well, as, well as to, to perform um, uh, an automated blocking, isolation, and quarantining of those infected uh, systems. Uh, now we are going to talk about how EDR plus Ativo EDN will provide us with a comprehensive MITRE attack framework coverage. So if you look at the uh, uh, MITRE ATT&CK framework with all the uh, tactics at the top and the techniques underneath, on the left side, these are the tactics and techniques where EDR core strength is focusing on. So basically, the, the, the main advantage or the main function of EDR is to uh, try to prevent the initial compromise to happen. That is uh, uh, very uh, basic. And uh, in, in other words, it tries to um, uh, basically prevent the infiltration to happen. OK? And detect it and blocking and the kill, the kill the process at the endpoint uh, uh, side. And the functionality of, of the DLP solution is to prevent the successful data exfiltration to happen. It means, the, I mean, try to prevent the attacker from stealing your data, uh, establishing the CNC communications and exfiltrating the data using the, the established channel. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation and based on the breach reports that are published by the third party organizations, Verizon for example, uh, the infiltration process takes a maximum of, or an average of five hours, the exfiltration is about 15 hours. But we mentioned that the average dwell time is 78 days. So, now we can understand that where are the 78 days uh, gone and, and uh, uh, what activities have been performed within the, that specific uh, dwell time. So if you look at the Ativo core strength when it comes to detecting the um, uh, adversary uh, TTPs and activities and lateral movement and credential theft within, within the network, then you know that those activities are time consuming. They are done many times by the attacker. There are multiple uh, 
compromisation, multiple discovery and reconnaissance activities, multiple lateral movement activities in order for the attacker to reach his, his final destination within the network before the data encryption or data exfiltration or whatever. So this is the exact focus of Ativo and, and the link that we provide between what EDR is offering and what DLP is offering is the real early threat detection during information gathering within the network along with full engagement and adversary intelligence and TTPs. This is uh, a new framework that, that was um, introduced by, by MITRE organizations and they call it the SHIELD matrix. Since the uh, uh, MITRE attack framework focuses on the tactic, techniques and procedure of the cyber attacks or the cyber threats, the SHIELD matrix looks at it, looks at it from a defender point of view or from a security team or a blue team point of view by looking at how are we able to defend our networks and uh, achieve early detection and response when it comes to uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures performed by those attackers. And if you look at the uh, categories, the different categories from a channel collection, containment, detection, disruption, and so on, under those uh, 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 main uh, categories, you have, for example, under the channel, you have admin access, API, uh, application diversity, decoy account, decoy content, decoy credentials, and decoy network. So decoy, decoy, decoys is, is mentioned everywhere. It means deceptive data, deceptive endpoint data, files, credentials, networks, services, applications is everywhere within the network to help us achieve early detections and adversary counterintelligence. So basically that proves the value of EDN when it comes to uh, uh, complementing the additional uh, security features that we already have from EPP and EDR on the endpoint side. Now let's look at uh, uh, a quick demo to see what kind of uh, information we are able to, uh, to uh, gather using or by applying the uh, advanced deception uh, solution within, within the network. As you can see from here, this is the dashboard of uh, the BotSync appliance. The BotSync appliance is the Ativo deception uh, uh, platform. And as you can see from here, these are the attack phases that we are able to detect and report within the networks. We have access, we have reconnaissance, we have deceptive credential use, man in the middle, decoy data, CNC, payload drop, and exploitation. So those classifications or these classifications is based on uh, uh, engagement and based on experiencing the activity in real time using our uh, deception uh, uh, components. So accuracy is very high, uh, high fidelity alerts, intelligence is very important here, and false positives uh, are almost uh, zero. And here is classified by severities, medium, high, very high. And those are the recent attack events that has been detected uh, within our environment. And at the bottom here, you have the MITRE attack mapping. We make it easy for you. We gather all the events that are related to initial access in one category, and then followed by executions, followed by persistence, but then privilege escalations, defense evasions, credentials access. So again, privilege escalations, credential access, discovery, and lateral movement are uh, very, very important um, uh, information that we need to have within our security teams or within our SOC for any incident that we face within our environment. It's very important to know or to have this information because mostly privilege escalations, credentials uh, access, as well as lateral movement will be performed by um, a compromised user account, which is basically a legitimate access within the network. That's why it's very difficult to be uh, detected and blocked by traditional security uh, controls. 
then let's have a quick look at um, some of the interesting events. If we, for example, focus our search into um, credential theft activity, so this is a deceptive credential use. And if we go to the events under those, as you can see from here, we are able to classify or to detect the deceptive credentials that will provide us with full details about uh, who is the attacker in my network. Uh, he's trying to use deceptive credentials related to which service, what is the target, which is basically a decoy systems, the operating systems for the target, and who is the compromised user account. As you can see, I will be able to provide you with full details about the user. This is the compromised user. And if I go into the um, attack or event report, I can show you everything else that attacker have performed before reaching to this level. And I will be able to export that into sticks for threat intelligence sharing and IUC for threat hunting, CSV for detailed analysis of the event and a full packet capture so you can analyze it, for example, using Wireshark and uh, you will be able to, uh, to gain uh, visibility on what actually the, um, uh, the, the, all, all the traffic and the communications being exchanged between the compromised machine and the real uh, systems. If we have a look at something else, let's look at something related to an Active Directory attack. So as you can see from here, I'm filtering down a specific event which says AD privilege group enumeration detected. It means that the attacker in this scenario is trying to enumerate a privileged group. Let's have a look, drill down into the details of that query. And as you can see from here, I am able to provide you with the full details of the source IP, the compromised user, the binary or the process where the, the command was executed, and in this case, it's just a, a CMD uh, uh, command, and the query, it's a net, you, net uh, session, a local group administrators, and it's a console output, and this is the SHA2 hash value of the uh, binary or the process that generated that specific uh, query. If we look at something related, for example, to reconnaissance, those are the events. Of course, first we provide the classification and then followed by the uh, events. As you can see from here, this is an attacker who is trying to do a system network uh, configuration uh, discovery. Or, for example, here I have an attacker who is trying to do a TCP port scan for a non-existent service. This is what I was talking about. So basically ports 23, 67, and 78 do not exist in my VLANs. So those ports are actually closed. So if I have an attacker who is targeting those ports to do a lateral spread, let's say it's a ransomware or whatever, and he is targeting those ports, or maybe 445 or 139 for the SMB uh, shares, uh, and I don't have those ports at the uh, uh, initially compromised machine or initially compromised VLAN. If someone tries to fingerprint those services, I will miss the chance of identifying the attacker at that point. What Deflect will do will alert me that somebody is trying to fingerprint or is trying to sweep those ports that are not defined or are not opened uh, within, within that specific VLAN, provide me with visibility, number one. And number two, it will, as you can see from here, deflect outbound. It will deflect the traffic to a decoy system that is running those services. So I can fully engage with the attacker and gain visibility on what he is trying to do at that uh, stage. So this is a very um, uh, important uh, feature. And as I mentioned, it will turn every endpoint within your environment to a trap or to a decoy 
to enable you detect the malicious activities. So um, let's have a look at uh, one more uh, uh, event uh, type. Let's look at access details, for example. And that will allow you to uh, um, get information or uh, more details on who is trying to access your uh, decoy systems and what is really happening uh, post the successful uh, access. So as you can see from here, the guy here is running those services and is trying to uh, do uh, a discovery of the file and folders. And this is the actual command that has been uh, executed and it is a local drive and this is the uh, client group that is installed the feature that allows us to detect this kind of uh, activity is the ransomware protection feature and this is the share to hash value of the uh, process so within those uh, events uh, we are able to perform a lot of activities so now we are not only talking about detection and visibility we will help you uh, perform actions like quarantining the attacker IP. Definitely natively from Ativo, from the Ativo service will enable you to quarantine the attacker IP, do a redirection of the traffic, do a full monitoring and running an endpoint forensics, or do a, a complete blocking of that, of that endpoint. Or you can define a playbook, a playbook that is uh, 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 integrating the Ativo uh, uh, bot sync with the other security controls that you have within your environment. Let's have a quick look at that, going to threat ops and blocking. As you can see from here, we integrate with most of the firewall vendors, most of the EDR vendors, analysis vendors, and so on. If we go to threat intelligence, we integrate with many threat intelligence uh, vendors that will have an intelligence sharing uh, internally and externally and we allow you to define your playbook um, uh, uh, blocking rules with multiple vendors that if I define them then you can just simply drag and drop perform a deflect or a redirection and save that rule before you create a trigger that will define if I receive an alert that where the source IP is this, the destination is that, the event type is this, then trigger this playbook automatically. Or you can follow the manual process by looking at the event, analyzing the event, and then performing the action directly by the security team or the SOC team. That was um, a quick demo. Um, uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope the, the, the message was clear and we will be definitely answering all of your uh, questions within, within the session in, in real time. And uh, again, um, uh, thank you very much. And thanks for uh, uh, Mina uh, ISC for hosting uh, this event. And we are uh, really uh, proud of this uh, partnership. Thank you very much and have a nice day.